Mike, we are so glad you've joined us because we couldn't have this concert and this festival without talking about Anton's because it is such a part of the iconic music venue scene nationwide, globally. I mean, I've been to South by Southwest 15 times yes. and you, it's like you're not in Austin unless you've gone to Anton. So we're so psyched you're here to be part of this. It's Absolutely. Amazing. We are missing, by the way, we missed South by Southwest yes. so much this year. I had three gigs booked, a couple yeah. hosting and a DJing at the Black Angels Club, like just doing different things. And it was so, I, we, we love the city. We've been there so yeah. many times. Yeah. Well, it's such a great place, you know, besides the music, you got Barton Springs, you got the river, you got barbecue, you got good Mexican food and, yeah. and, Mexican. and good drinks, you know. Yeah. So good. So, yeah, Antone's is, you know, it's such a cornerstone of Austin music. And that goes back to Clifford Antone in the mid-70s, opened up a club when no one really had clubs downtown. It was a place you didn't really go, you know. And uh, he opened up club and he had a vision of just a blues club, uh, which at that time seemed really far-fetched. But he brought in people like, you know, Albert King. I um, mean, he started, the first night was Clifton Chenier and Jimmy Reed. And, and all these people came down because they heard, hey, there's this crazy guy, Clifford Antones, that has this club. And, and uh, of course, also locally had people like Jimmy Vaughn and the Fabulous Thunderbirds with the house band, Stevie Ray Vaughn, the Cobras. You know, these were amazing talents that just absorbed everything that, that the legends brought down, you know, from Otis Rush to Albert Collins and on and on and on. So what developed uh, blew up in the 80s with Stevie Ray Vaughan and then the Fabulous Thunderbirds and then on into the 90s. It's kind of what my generation was with me, Sue Foley, when we'll be playing the show on Saturday. You know, playing drums with us is Chris Whipper Layton from Stevie Ray's band. And uh, so it's this community that just grows and grows and grows. And on to Gary Clark Jr. I mean, Austin music, I, I don't know what else to say about it except. It's strong, and it continues to be strong. Absolutely. You know, Gary's one of the owners of Antones, right? He Absolutely. He, he, you know, Antones has struggled like a lot of venues, and a lot of venues are struggling now more than ever. But, you know, over the years, Antones has been here since the mid-'70s. So through different periods of time, it has had its ups and downs. And Gary came in uh, with some other people, Will Bridges among them, and they – they were kids that came up at Antone's, mm -hmm. you know, as fans. And then they got into the position, they took Antone's over and made it, you know, I think better than ever in a lot of ways. Yeah. Well, well yeah. Gary Clark Jr. is the Messiah on many levels. So yeah. <laughs> yes, his magic touch and being part of Antone's is so important and special for sure. Ab absolutely. I mean, and I've known Gary since he was 13 or 14. And uh, I remember... One time, me and Gary had a, a, a gig. It was just a duo gig, B3 Oregon and him singing, playing guitar. And we got fired from that gig because uh, we didn't have enough people coming in, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, t the tables have turned on that now. But, uh, yeah, I love Gary, and he he's, carries on that tradition. He's an amazing player, an amazing person, and he, he waves that Austin flag every chance he gets, you know? I think it's fantastic, right? Yeah. Now, John Doe, of course, uh, is going to perform. And uh, I just shot a movie with John Doe, actually, down in Florida. Where we did a remake of DOA, and I played a police captain. He plays the main character. Being right. a fan all my, you know, all my life since I was a kid, that was such an incredible experience. And John just continues to make great records, great Americana records. And dude, what a history he has. You know, he's one of those guys. I, you know... He had a band called The Knitters, right? His country band. And, uh, you know, I knew the bass player, Johnny Ray Bartell, and that's really how I got to know that whole scene. And John Doe now has moved to Austin. And, of course, he's kind of a mystery man. You don't see John around a bunch, but then he pops up every once in a while. And, and uh, he brings a lot to the town. And it says a lot about the town that John would come and move here, you know. Absolutely. And he's just uh, always been such a great songwriter, and he was very gracious to work with. I love when he reunites sex and when he does his solo thing as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Antones in Austin, Texas. And uh, glad you came to the Detour uh, show, benefiting Music Cares and Neva National 
Independent Venue Association. Thanks for your donations. I'm going to get to it. Enjoy the show. We gotta get on board this train. We gotta get on board this train. You might get to choose where you get on board, but we gotta get on board this train. You can't choose your seat on this train. You can't choose your seat on this train. You can look out the window, or stand in the aisle, but we gotta get on board this train. There's all kinds of people on this train. There's all kinds of people on this train. But there's no VIP, uh-uh, no platinum reserve. Cause everybody's on board this train There's a mountain pass and a straightaway There's a water stop on a rainy day Some people had come in from miles and miles away the bridge at the end of the day but ready or not cause here it comes and we gotta get on board this train say we gotta get on board right on and a little help. I'm digging this ditch in the green, green grass. They're talking to the sun in the sky. Water's coming down man behind where we sleep in this town I'm trying to make a pond or maybe a lake where the water is fresh and clean the sun says okay you walk home Your job is done for today Help me Help me Everybody needs a little help Help me, won't you time or every day just need a little help today need a little help today about the sun and in my dreams I'm still digging that ditch now you're talking to the moon help me help me everybody needs a little
All right, hope you guys are still with us, enjoying the show. I encourage everybody to get registered to vote and to vote come November. It's a big deal. It's your right as a citizen, and it's your duty. This song was written in uh, 1983, and it still holds true today. I send this out to my fellow ex-bandmates, Xene and Billy and DJ. I'm doing this for you guys. Honest to goodness, the bars wouldn't open this morning. There must have been voting for a new president or something. Do you have a quarter? I said yes, because I did. Honest to goodness, the tears have been falling all over this country's face. It was better before, before they voted for what's his name. This is supposed to be the new world Better before the voter for what's his name This is supposed to be the new world Flint, Ford, Automobile, Alabama Windshield whoppers, Buffalo, New York Gary, Indiana, don't forget the Motor City Baltimore, D.C. Now all we need is Don't forget the Motor City This is supposed to be the new world Don't forget the Motor City This is supposed to be the new world We need is money, just give us what you can spare. 20 or 30 pounds of potatoes, or 20 or 30 beers, a turkey on Thanksgiving, like alms for the poor. All we need are the necessities and more. Better before they voted for what's his name. This is supposed to be the new world. Better before they voted for what's his name. This is supposed to be the new world You say you want a revolution Well, you know We don't love to see a plan Thank you very much on behalf of the D Tour and uh, Neva and Music Cares. Thanks for chipping in. We'll see you later. Our sponsors are uh, going to match every dollar that you guys put in there. Okay. See you later. John Doe says goodbye. It's well, one of a kind. We couldn't do this without you. Antones is essential as part of you know the, the independent venue community. So thank you for being part of it. We're so excited for the show. And uh, yeah, we're just celebrating music and all the venues. So thanks so much. Absolutely. Thank you all. And it was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much, Mike. Allison, this is amazing what we're doing today. The reason you and I got involved is we love live music so much. It's such a part of our lives. And uh, why don't right. you tell everybody what's... All, all the donations going today are, are coming and they're going to Music Cares and Neva. We're supporting, of course, the independent venues and Spotify is matching uh, dollar for dollar all the donations. So please keep them coming. We really appreciate you being part of it, celebrating the music, celebrating the community to make this all possible so we can come and see shows again once it's safe and we can all be together. We can't wait. That's something we used to do almost every night of the week together. And we're looking forward to the light at the end of this tunnel. But it's really important, as Allison said, that you help out and donate because we want to do as much as we can for the venues all around America, the National Independent Venue Association and Music Cares has done so much for the music community and musicians and people that work around uh, the music industry. That's right. You're watching Detour. Thank you all for tuning in to Detour. It's such a pleasure to be a part of this event. My name is Eve Monse. This is Mike Buck, musicians here in Austin, Texas, playing on our favorite stage in the whole world here at Antone's Nightclub. And um, so happy to be part of this event that 
is raising money for both Music Cares, which is helping so many musicians, and Neva, which is helping venues like Antone's and all the great stages around the country that are having to close temporarily, want to make sure everybody's able to reopen. So uh, how about some music? <laughs> guitars for this next one here. All right, this next one is written by Mr. Mike Buck. Red Cat 
the tavern And he sat down at the bar Oh please, Mr. Demo What could you do with this sick guitar? Doing this second time. so much thanks for contributing and for tuning in to detour helping raise some money for neva and for music cares looking forward to seeing y'all back in the bar soon let's all be safe out there take care Thank you. hey it's matt pinfield and you've been watching detour and it continues with so much great live music and interviews with all the artists that are donating their time and what we're looking for from you if you are a fan of live music and you're missing it it's so important to donate if you can, anything you have would really be helpful. Of course, we're doing this for the National Independent Venue Association, which is called NEVA, and for Music Cares. Now, Music Cares has done so many things for musicians and people in the music community. And right now, more than ever, uh, they need your help because they're helping keep a lot of people alive who are not able to tour and make a living right now. But there's these are really crazy times that we're uh, going through right now during COVID-19 and this pandemic. But we have to stick together. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. The beautiful thing is music has always brought us together. And that's what we're doing right now is we're bringing a bunch of people together to love and celebrate music and uh, to just get some help and to help out our, our fellow man and musician. We're doing it. And speaking of an artist that I love that I discovered last year, I'm going to introduce you to David Ramirez. David, what's going on, man? What up, Matt? Thanks for having me. Well, it's good to see you. You know, last time we saw each other was a little bit before the whole pandemic started. You were playing here in Los Angeles in Hollywood at the Hotel Cafe, and you were phenomenal. I loved it. We talked about music that night, and then I found out that your girlfriend was from my home area and listened to me on the radio in Asbury Park, New Jersey, like yeah. back in, the, in those days. And it was just that, that was really crazy. There was that connection. But the performance was so soulful, and the songs were so incredibly honest. I loved what you were doing, and uh, I, just people were completely moved by the shows. You did three shows in a row. It was a three-night stand. Yeah. And, man, I can't wait for you to get back out here and be able to play again. How oh, is you're it telling me. You, tell me about, you know, how things are in Austin and, and what the mood is generally like. I mean, I would imagine uh, – I mean, the, the crazy thing is everybody's kind of on the same page. So I'd imagine it's, it's relatively similar to what everybody else is going through. But um, – I mean, my group of friends, you know, granted, we're not really seeing all that much of each other, but we're we're talking on the phone a lot more. And I think people are getting um, a little stir crazy, but the creativity is is moving and the heart of creativity is alive and well in a, in a lot of the homies here here in town. Um, people are starting new bands or, uh, you know, <laughs> 
thinking about uh, kicking off old bands and um, writing new records. And so that's been exciting to see that uh, we haven't fully given up yet. We're still hanging on. No, we can't give up. Absolutely not. And we need your music and we need you. So I love that. Now, My Love is a Hurricane is the new album that you put out, and it's been out for a little over a month. Uh, tell me about the record. Was it recorded for a little while before? Because I know you were doing new songs from it when I saw you live. And uh, they were really honest, soul-searching songs about love and relationships and different things that you go through. And I thought that that was one of the things that was so strong about your performance and your delivery there. Yeah. How yeah. long uh, was the album done before the whole pandemic thing took place? We, we, uh, I got the masters back January of this year. So uh, <laughs> yeah. we were, we, start, we started recording in October of 2018. So the entire time from the minute we hit record was, 2020 that's going to be our year it's going to be so dope you know and um we got the masters in january and we're you know everybody was scheduling tours but i hadn't really toured uh, a record in in about three years so i was i was excited little kid you know um so it was a shame but we'll get there eventually but yeah july 17th came out i'm real stoked about it yeah we're, we're excited about the album david and uh i think it's great that you're uh, gonna uh, play some music for us here which i'm Really, really, man. Good. Thanks, thanks for having me be a part of the whole thing. I'm stoked. Yeah. Well, we were we 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 just we were saying we were talking about it and saying, oh, how great was it, David Romero's show over at the Hotel Cafe? Got to get David on the show, and uh, I think he can bring a lot of emotion and uh, and spiritual music right now to people. So, thank you so much, by the way, David, for uh, for be, giving your, me a few minutes to talk to me uh, while the, all this insanity is going on. But the good news is we're all sticking together, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, there will be light at the end of the tunnel, which is what I always say. We're going to be able to be in venues again, and we're going to do our musicians like yourself are going to do the greatest show you've ever done the minute you guys are out of the gate. You know what I mean? I agree with you. Yeah. And I look forward to it. So, David, thanks so much for checking in. Thanks for having me. It. David Ramirez, everyone, you are watching Detour, and we will continue with great performances. Hey, everybody. It's Tony Scalzo from Fastball, Austin, Texas. Great to be playing. This is the first gig I've played since March 12th. And uh, I'm gonna do a song uh, in honor of my friend Kathy Valentine, who's written a great book of her memoirs. And this is a sort of a memoir song for me. And it's about my old band called Electric Kool-Aid. I went down
Next up, the blue bonnets. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Excited. We have Kathy Valentine here now, Allison. Yes. We were talking about the documentary. I love the Go Go's documentary. Oh, cool. Um, such a great celebration of a special time in history, a special band, the music that lives on and on. And also, congrats on the new song, Club Zero, which Thank is really you. cool. Pretty amazing. It's incredible, Kathy. I remember when I bought the first stiff single of We Got the Beat, you know, an import, you know, when I was, uh, when I was a young teen. And, uh, New York, New Jersey area there, and I picked that up, and uh, next thing you know, you guys are uh, on tour, opening for the police, and then your record goes to number one, right, with, with, right. with Our Lips Are Sealed and, and the album, Beauty and the Beat. It was so, it was so great. Um, but it, how ironic that the police come in, and they're like, uh, congrats to you guys who are opening for us who are number one. <laughs> which like is amazing. The police on the charts, which is hilarious. 
Yeah. Well, what an incredible history, Kathy. I mean, just the fact that, you know, you guys formed out here and, you know, forming an, an all-girl, all-woman group at that period of time and saying, you know what, we're going to go out here, we're going to rock, we're going to do our thing. And it's just uh, the story is really incredible. When you look back on that documentary being made, did it, uh, was it one of those situations where it kicks up, you're saying, wow, it's been quite the journey? Well, um, I think when we, when we saw the documentary, um, it was interesting to see the big picture all at once because, you know, you tend to not have that opportunity to see the whole big picture of, you know, decades of your life and, and compressed down into uh, 90 minutes. So it was kind of interesting and it was it was really moving. It really, I think, celebrates the endurance of this band and tells a lot of our story that I, I don't think people knew about. So I think uh, I think in the past, uh, for whatever reason, we've been kind of overlooked and dismissed. And I think this really kind of highlights our achieve not only our achievements, but just the spirit. And it's it's everything that rock and roll is about. You know, this is a band that came together on the streets of L.A. Uh, and made it all the way to the top. And that's just kind of that's what it's about. That's yeah. what we all dream of happening when we pick up a guitar. That's what we want. It's the coolest, and you're right, it's the epitome of rock and roll, the rock and roll spirit, the perseverance, and I'm so glad the story has come out because I've been a fan for ages, and just to celebrate the music and the story has been great. Tell me about how Club Zero came about and what that was like to get back together, you know, to create new music again. Well, um, we it was difficult because we all, we live in, besides having pretty full, um, very different lives. We live in five different cities. Um, we are from, we are spread across the globe, literally from Thailand to Mexico, to San Francisco, to Texas, to Los Angeles. So writing a song via email and, you know, kind of just sending ideas back and forth like that was challenging. I'm amazed we got it done, to be honest. But it was, it wasn't like, it, we really, we weren't trying to have a hit or, or be, you know, the number one band or anything like that. We just wanted something to kind of, we believed in the documentary so much and in the vision of Alison Elwood, who's just, you know, she's a fantastic director. And we just wanted to be able to show something um, in the present time that showed a little bit how we work together, how we create together, how we interact with each other. Because all the interviews were done separately and there, we felt like it was missing. Like you're not seeing the dynamic of the band. So the producers were thrilled. Yeah, I, I, I just want to say one more time, I'm just so glad the, the documentary came out. It just really struck a chord with me on many levels, just as a woman, as a, as a music lover. Um, what do you hope is like the main takeaway for people watching the documentary? Um, I think that we meant a lot. Uh, I think we had a, a place in history that nobody could take away. And aside from that, besides just the factual facts, the factual facts, I like that, mm -hmm. um, of what we accomplished, you know, we had heard for decades individually, collectively, that our music helped young people, adolescents and kids through uh, hard times in, in, in their lives. We had heard that people looked at us and saw hope uh, and inspiration. I've met people just on the street that said, I left my hometown and went and pursued a career in the arts because I saw the Go-Go's and it showed me that something could be done that I hadn't thought could be done. So we knew that we'd had an impact, but we it also felt sometimes like we were dismissed by, I don't know, it just felt like we weren't always um, given some of the credit that we deserved. Well, my takeaway is that you guys were the epitome of punk rock, rock and roll, yeah. badass, fierce femmes that have inspired mm -hmm. uh, generations of not just women, but artists, music fans, and lovers in general. So thank you. Very grateful. Well, it's great. Well, so great. Kathy, Thanks, thank guys. you for taking the time to uh, hang out with us, and we're really happy to have you as part of the show today. Yeah. Oh, me too. I'm so excited. This means so much to me. I love Music Cares. I love there's an organization helping uh, venues. This is where I got my music education. Was I've been hanging out in the clubs since I was a teenager, and I shouldn't have even been in the clubs. But that's where I. Uh, that's where my dreams were born. That's where I met my fellow musicians, that's where I got inspired. And I just can't imagine a future where our, my daughter's turning 18 and the thought that she's not gonna have 
clubs and bands to go see just makes me like breaks my heart. So yeah. I'm thrilled to be a part of this. Yeah. The venues are where we feel alive. You know, yeah, they're, they're essential. So thank you for being part of this, Kathy. We really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. See you guys um, in real life sometime. Yes, yes. We absolutely look forward to it, Kathy. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kathy guys. Valentine, and you are watching Detour. The show will continue. Hey, y'all. This is Jason Corbier on the drums. Sue Foley on the guitar. My name is Mike Flanagan, and we're going to play the state anthem of Texas. It's called, What's the Word? It's Thunderbird. Uh, get high, everybody, get high. Uh, get high, everybody, get high. Uh, get high, everybody, get high. Get high, everybody, get high. Have you heard? What's the word? It's on the bird. Now, all you kids from Texas, you grow so big and tall. All you kids from Texas, you grow so big and tall. Now all of you want to roam in that T-bird house. I get high, 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 way up in the sky. A oh, honey, baby, yes, so When you want to rock with me, have you heard what's the word? It's on the bird. Texas, you grow so big and tall. Now all you girls from Texas, you grow so big and tall. Now all of you want to roam in that T-bird house. Get high, everybody, get high. 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 Have you heard? What's the word? It's on the bird. For all you kids in Texas. She just started off. It's just the blues. Okay. <laughs> Sitting here thinking about an old friend that I used to have. I'm sitting down thinking about an old friend that I used to have. But she ain't around here no more She's way out in the west somewhere If 
If you ever go to West Texas, won't you please stop by Abilene? If you ever go to West Texas, won't you please stop by Abilene? They got some of the most pretty women up there that a man mostly ever seen. West Texas I'm gonna fall down on my knees I'm going way out to West Texas I'm gonna fall down on my knees Go and find my good girl out there. Won't you please come home to me? Yeah. And now, David Ramirez. Hello there, my name is David Ramirez out of Austin, Texas. This is called My Love is a Hurricane.
so much. This next one's called Easy Does It. It's always gonna be this way if you let it it only goes away if you make it Though misery is a faithful friend It does not deserve your attention Things break down and bank accounts run dry Love can be the chore you most despise Thank you. 
so much. Well, once again, my name is David Ramirez, and thanks for having me. Um, we're filming here live from my town, Austin, Texas, at the great and wonderful venue here downtown called The Parish. <laughs> another new one this is called I want to live in your bedroom
Thank you so much. Next up, Kathy Valentine. Hey, everybody. Detour, it's awesome. I grew up in Austin, Texas. I got my musical education in the clubs here. Uh, Antones was one of my first places, Continental Clubs, so many great places. The Roman, uh, Doug Som, the Thunderbirds. Oh my God, Stevie Ray Vaughan. This is where I grew up. This is where I found bandmates, where I got inspired, where I rocked out pretty much from the age of 16 on. And I'm really excited to, to help out all these places all over the country. And I want to welcome Tony Scalzo, my good friend, Thank you, Kathy. to accompany me on this song. A pleasure. I still haven't gotten 